welcome to the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. This meeting is being recorded and videotaped. Um, can she sit here or does she have to sit here? She's our guest speaker. She can sit right here. She can sit here. She's not just a member of the public. <laughs> okay, so we're going to um, have our meeting now. We're going to start with um, introductions, so we'll just go around and say are and how we can here. I'll start. I'm Tori Eklund and I am the chair of this commission and we will start this way. Okay, I'm Ruth McGrath, I'm secretary. Katie Thornton, I'm a member. Martin Nagy, I'm a member. Janet Shaw, guest speaker. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge. Patty Shaughnessy, ADA coordinator. Looks like you, you folks have some nice initiatives going on here in, in terms of the um, braille menus and whatnot. Um, I think that uh, I think there probably would be there would be room for some collaboration here. Um, what I'd like to do, Tori, is to suggest or to all of you actually that um, we have a disability committee that meets monthly at Stavros. Uh, we have one in the Springfield area, and we also have one up in uh, in the Amherst office. Uh, it might be helpful at some point for um, Jim Waleko to come on down and see how you know they might be able to collaborate with you folks because I think it would be awesome. That would be great. That would be awesome. Uh, Is he the person who runs those meetings? Yes. Okay, that would be fantastic. What's her name? It's Jim. W O L J E K L O. And what's his title? Waleko. Wait a minute. Let me write that down. Give me that. He is. I'm sorry. It's W O L E J K O. Thank you very much. And what's his title? He's an advocate, peer counselor, and uh, he runs our uh, disability action network for um, Hampshire Franklin County. Do you have a telephone number? I do. 413-256-0473. And his extension is 216. Thank you. You're welcome. I will give him a call because the record Going on in oh, good. It would be really nice to be able to get uh, get the folks on that committee active with you folks. And That's many, great. you know, a couple of them are from Northampton, so that we're not the meeting. Oh, why'd you have to ask me that? Um, I want to say they might be the first Monday of the month. Are they in the evening or the afternoon? They're in the afternoons, from one to say three o'clock. Because. Hmm. 
it would be also great if someone, I mean, if he wanted, if someone from our commission could join them maybe for a meeting. Sure, that would be. That would be difficult for me because. <coughs> and difficult for me, difficult for Patty, Ruthie, for Ruth. Maybe. Okay. Michael, I, you're Michael, retired. Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah, cool. That'd be good. What, where are the meetings? They're at our Amherst office, 210 Old Farm Road in Amherst. We got a nice conference room there. Where is Old Farm Road? Um, it's off of Route 9. If you head out toward Belchertown, uh, it's. Do you know where um, Rolling Green is? Yes. Okay, right, right across the street from Rolling Green is Old Farm Road. And as you take a right there, um, there's a big gray building on the left. So the other things that we've got going on right now at Stavros are things like Money Follows the Person. Are you familiar with Money Follows the Person in the state and the federal initiative to try to combine services so that uh, uh, there's a little bit uh, you know, more services in place? following people out of nursing homes and, and getting them into the community again and spending money there to try to keep people living independently as possible. It's a huge initiative with the oh, state God. feds. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's a challenge, believe me. It's, it's been a challenge. We've been getting people out of nursing homes and helping them to relocate to their communities for the 40 years. This is our 40th anniversary, by the way. Um, and we've been doing this for 40 years, and with Money Follows the Person, it's, it's an awesome program, potentially for our consumers, in that you know Medicaid will pay to uh, have in-home services as opposed to um, paying for the nursing home care. But again, you know, the people that we're dealing with on this are, are people that have been stuck in the facilities for a very long time. So their lives are challenging in and of themselves. So um, putting the services together has is, is been very difficult, um, but at the same time, really awesome. Really awesome. And the other thing that we're working on now, too, is money. I'm sorry, that was Money Follows the Person, is the One Care Initiative which again is another state and federal um, initiative for people who have both mass health and medicare to try to ease that link between you know who does what and when uh, as far as medicare is concerned um, medicare for example won't pay for uh, repairs to chairs to wheelchairs um, and the state had previously if you had um, the need for a wheelchair repair, you'd have to go to Medicare first and get a denial, even though it isn't something that they do anyway. You'd have to get a denial and then uh, go through the prior authorization unit at Mass Health because Medicare wouldn't cover you know, the cost of the repair, so, and that's been a nightmare. People have been waiting up to six months or so for their chairs to come back from repairs or whatever because of that Medicare, Medicaid link. So, um, and there's two insurance companies that have joined in in this area, and it's Fallon and um, Commonwealth Care Alliance, are who we are partnered with to try to pull this off and, and make it happen. And again, that has been, a program with it comes with its own set of challenges as well but um, we are having an impact people are getting a little better health care anyway uh, I think the biggest toll in the one care system is uh, centered around people with mental health issues we just don't as a society deal very well with folks with mental health issues it's huge. It is, and it's huge it is absolutely huge um, so we're anticipating and pushing for, you know, more more services for folks with mental health issues, uh, and working with providers as well to um, to work differently with their patients, um, 
because often they're not very patient with their patients because they've got 10 or 15 minutes to see somebody. So this is supposed to be a more holistic approach to health care for folks with disabilities and who have Medicare and Mass Health. Well, if you also look at when you talk about mental health issues, that is a disability. There's no question oh, about it. None. Oh, yeah. Some of them are will happen for the rest of their lives. Um, ServiceNet, being the chair on social services, veterans, culture, and recreation, I deal with a tremendous amount of agencies throughout the city, also in Springfield that I've invited through Pat Keller, who works with me very closely. And I would suggest talking to Susan Stubbs, who is the CEO of ServiceNet. She's fantastic. We also have Safe Passage and talk to Mary Ann, what's her last name? Mary Ann Winters. Is Winters, that thank you. I've got them coming. Mary Ann Winters? Yes, she's a director. <coughs> and I have them coming to my meeting in September again. And we've reunited by me having them come last year for the first time ever in our committee. And they're working with the city very closely oh, now good. and with Pat Keller. So I find them very, very helpful. Cooley Dixon Hospital also has an excellent program. NAMI is another one that you could be looking at. Mm -hmm. We have them coming in for the first time in our um, commission, I mean, our committee meeting. So they're out there, and there's some really excellent, excellent agencies. Yes, absolutely there. Has Stavros ever connected <laughs> with um, the Recovery Learning yeah, yeah. They're great. They are, they are phenomenal. They are peer support. Yep. Yeah. They're absolutely phenomenal. They haven't really embraced the One Care Initiative. I'm not exactly sure why, but I would love to have been trying to get somebody from one of the RLCs in to talk to us a little bit about that. We have weekly meetings on the One Care. Um, we have uh, five individuals at Stavros who do long-term services and supports um, coordination uh, because it's an automatic enrollment now for people and there's going to be another enrollment on July 1st so you might be hearing a lot of stuff about people saying well wow you know I just got enrolled in this and I didn't ask for it or I didn't sign up for it um, but it is an automatic enrollment you do not need to be a part of it uh, if you decide to opt out and keep your current clinicians, that's fine. But they're automatically enrolling dual eligible folks by having Medicare and Medicaid. So, could you see the One Care Initiative is a dual program? Is that? It, it's a program for duly eligible folks, and the meaning, and yep, Medicare and Medicaid. And it's handled. That's, it. that's, that's the only requirement. That you're eligible for both of those things. Yes. Right. You're eligible for both. You're in. Yes. The program. And yes. And and um, so you have to kind of pay attention because if you, if you don't want to be in, you can opt out um, and keep your current providers. A lot of people have been opting in and then opting out again uh, because it's not you know their their own. PCPs or whatnot are not members of the uh, the One Care Insurance Company. Question: Are you getting um, many um, veterans, men and women, that are coming to Starbucks? No. I don't know if you want to speak as a order. No, we wish we did, but um, you know the veterans. It's a it's a little bit different. Veterans basically want to talk to veterans. They're not, you know, really terribly interested in talking to lay people, and we would be lay people. Um, we did have a veterans benefit specialist on board when um, we had the Americans Recovery and. We did have one then, but um, we weren't able to sustain it. But we found that people did not come to us for that reason. They just would prefer to talk to another veteran. Mm -hmm. Peer support is really important. I mean, that's 
a big part of it is that veterans, I think, oftentimes would rather talk to others who have been in similar oh, absolutely. situation. I can appreciate that. I don't know how anybody can come back well. from a place from like Afghanistan exactly. or Iraq and be the same. We have them come to social services and veterans and culture and recreation. And we have sometimes five to six that are on the veterans council there. And they work extremely hard helping all the veterans and Steve Connors, our veterans agent, throughout the state of Massachusetts. And Steve's awesome. I'll just add that we have a uh, representative who um, helps with veteran benefits. Mm -hmm. He worked at the VA hospital for a couple decades. Ooh, who is and that person? and uh, he volunteers here. And I knew you were going to ask me his name, and I'm not going to be able to tell you. Um, but if you give me, if you have an email address, I can get that to you. But he's here usually one or two times um, a month. Oh, cool. Yeah, and that'd he's, be he's good. Excellent, because he's been in the field for so long. Right. And also soldiers on at the yep. hospital. We're connected with them, That's and awesome. they're excellent. Oh. John Downing. Ah, they're, they're really incredible, and, and they're they're people of action. You know, they're not just giving a lot of lip service. Yep. They're actually doing it. Yeah, awesome. It's good when people know the ins and outs of all the benefits, and you know which direction and which department it is you need to go to. Yes. So more about Stavros. I mean, we're still doing our peer counseling and advocacy with folks with disabilities and still um, doing well at that. Um, resources, hey, they're shrinking still, um, but we're still out there and doing it. Uh, still have the PCA program in place, and that's a good thing. Yeah. And um, geez, at Stavros, we now have a uh, transition to adulthood program for students between the ages of 14 and 22 who are in school. Uh, and that's been an awesome program. And right now, we're working with the youths to, uh, to find them jobs, get them job sites, get them paid so that they can, and they serve for kids that are kids, well, you know, youths between the ages of 16 and 22, again, who are still in school. Um, but we're finding them jobs and we're actually paying the students through some money from MRC, uh, Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission and the Federal Rehab Agency. So that's really good. We've got about 35 students that we're going to, uh, well, some of them are already working. So if you know of anybody that needs some help, uh, free wages, we'll, we'll pay the freight. <laughs> uh, love to get somebody on board. So, what about me? I'm going to get. Oh, um, so, Gina, can I, <laughs> Gina, can I have you ask you about yeah, what? It, how is um, Stavros funded? Mostly, well, a lot of ways now, but mostly for the programs that I run. I've got eight programs that I run. Most of that money comes from MRC. PCA program is paid with uh, state Medicaid funds and also, of course, um, federal money because the feds contribute to the state's Medicaid programs. Um, and then otherwise, uh, we did a lot of hard work in getting grants. Um, so we do a lot of work with grants. Who does your grants? Um, Who does your grant writing? Denise. You know Denise. Mm -hmm. She does it. She's been Denise. Awesome. Yep. She she's does wonderful. it. Wonderful. She's, she's awesome. Mm -hmm. She's truly really awesome. So she does quite a bit of that for us. Um, and then some of the other ones, like the um, transition to adulthood program, that was such a good hit the first two years that that's going to be ongoing. The vocational component of it. They hope to have go for another couple of years, but when they're not really sure what they're going to do with that. But it's been awesome. And your home sweet home program? And our home sweet home program is it's still going. Um, funding, you know, we're out of money. Uh, Lois does a great job at, at knitting together different funding resources to help get ramps built. She's been awesome at that. What's your budget? Oh. 
The state gives us $17,000 a year for our Home Sweet Home program, um, which you know doesn't even come close to covering the, the cost of, of the person that runs it. So Lois goes out and she's made contacts with um, builders and uh, with lumber yards for um, you know discounts on lumber and, and whatnot. And she works very hard with the uh, ASAPs, um, the senior agencies, in um, helping elders get access to ACE money to help buy the supplies. Uh, so it's a knitted together kind of thing. Um, and usually we're able, somehow, I don't know how, I don't know how she does it, but she's usually able to, uh, to um, find funding for up to 65 ramps a year. How much? 65. Wow. I have a question about the PCA program. Um, I remember back in the very old days, it's a little known fact that I worked at Stafford's recently back in the yeah, I know. You should brag about that more. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I remember back then that people could um, access the PCA program either through funds from Medicaid or um, if they were working, they could also get help funding PCA through Mass Rehab. But I was just wondering if that's still true. Like, what do you do if you're working and you're not eligible for Medicaid when you need PCAs? Well, the PCA program is a mass health program. So if if somebody doesn't have mass health, we'll help them to access mass health. If they're a working person, they're probably going to have to pay a deductible, but it's not impossible. Um, and the deductibles are, you know, fairly inexpensive. It's it's not outrageous like your standard commercial insurance. Like what is it? Common. common. They call it common. Common, common health? health? Yep, common health. So that's, you're allowed that's under Mass Health? Yes. So you're allowed to do that even if your employer has other health insurance? Yes. Now the, the person would have the other the, the other health insurance and Mass Health would be the secondary insurance. So anything that mm -hmm. the primary insurance doesn't cover, Mass Health will usually cover it. And like around what would be an like how much would the deductible be? I'm just interested because I know people in that situation. Well, I don't know. It, it, it varies. Um, I think the highest that I heard that anybody was paying was like 150 a month. For Mass Health? Yeah. For the no. to meet the deductible. I thought Mass Health was free. Well, if you're working and you're therefore like not income eligible. If you're not working. Health, right. But if you're not working, it's free. Right. Okay. Well, free, you sign away your home or you sign away, you know, that there's going to be a lien on your home if you need the PCA program and you access Mass Health. They haven't done anything about removing anybody's, uh, they haven't called in any liens on anybody's house at this point, but uh, you, you do sign that, you know, you're willing to have a lien on your house for the amount of, uh, they could take it out if you have the PCA program for 20 years and let's say you got $1,000 a month in PCA, they can recover some portion of that. What if you don't have a house? Well then you're the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, last question. Um, what is your favorite food? months and months, they're waiting months and months. They got a, a, something in the mail, I just was at a resident's house last week, stating that um, their application was in the process, but um, they, it's going to take about two to three months. So I'm hearing that if they go to dental, only so much work will be done, like cleaning or whatever. And if you need false teeth, you can't even get that. That's Right. Yeah, the dental that's matters are awful. Yeah, really yeah. well, that's awful to let somebody run around with no teeth. It is awful. Well, I know. It, it hasn't been considered to be medically necessary. I, I don't know how you can make that leap. I think you know? we could make that leap by saying if you do research 
chewing is very, very important yeah. in the digestive system. Well, because because you, have, you have to be able to eat in order to survive, so therefore it is life-sustaining. Mm -hmm. It is. And that's basically one of the biggest attractions for people who are choosing the One Care for either um, Commonwealth Care Alliance or from Fallon is because they've got dental. Uh -huh. That's not, you know, it's not, not everything is going to be covered, but you can certainly get your basics done, whereas, right. you know, you get a cleaning every six months from Mass Health. Doesn't yeah, happen. Get your teeth pulled, but then if you need a plate, you can't have a plate put in. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pull them. Yeah, we'll pull them. Um, we'll pull them. Right? That's sad. That's awful. It is awful. Oh, really? I, yes. I think it's something that could be challenged. Uh, well, yes, and it should be challenged. Uh -huh. I, I mean, it's it's also, uh, you know, the reality is the resources and the monetary resources to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's largely true with uh, folks with um, mental health issues. Yeah. You know, again, there's a big population and not enough money to go around to really help. The work that you do is awesome. The, whole, the independent living movement. I think so. I think so. We're morphing. You know, it's a little bit less, you know, when we have to be responsible to the insurance companies. You know, that's not something that we ever did before, you know. Right, it puts um, a whole different dynamic into it. Exactly. And and trying to maintain that sense of independence is, is difficult when you've got to take instructions from the insurance companies and, you know, they're you're going to bill them for... It's crazy. It's crazy, Megan, but... Um, you know, that's the way that it is. So um, my own little personal rebellion on this is just about over now. And, <laughs> you know, it, because it just, uh, even with money follows the person, it's difficult because it's, uh, you know, it's us taking care of our consumer and, you know, getting the services in place and making sure that they're there so that independent living portion of it doesn't really exist for people with money follows the person. We've got a, a lot of responsibility to make sure they're okay. Well, I want to thank you very much. You done with me? Nope. I just want to <laughs> say that I thank you very much for all the work that you're doing for the community in general and in Stravas. And I also would like to invite you Ooh. September 15th from 4 o'clock till 5. No, when is it? When's our meeting? 5 to 6. You're looking at me, Patty, like. I'm wondering what you're going to the uh, social service committee. I'm talking about mine. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I think she's I September sixteenth. I'm not inviting you yet to um, commission on social services, veterans, and cultural oh. recreation, but eventually I will. I have a full house right up until November. Anyway, September sixteenth from four to five p.m. We are inviting. No, it's from five to six, and then from six to seven. Right, five well, to hopefully, Tori, okay, because if you cannot, I know that day you'll stay with us, but if we have a meeting that's held over 15 or 15 more minutes, and there's something that's very important, we need to bring that forward, okay, Tori? Um, yeah, I mean, but we're, I, I know the meeting is five to six, but I want you to understand, sometimes there might be something brought up that might take another 10 or 15 minutes. And even if you have to leave, I'm talking about our meetings in general. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll talk with Patty about this. Oh no, I, so, was, I, I, thought I was just making reference to the time change because that was the date that we had agreed that we were going to have a meeting and then have the social. Right, right. so, so, so right. that was gonna be from five so, to so, seven. So you're both on the same page. September 16th is what you're talking about. Yes, I am meeting. talking about yeah. that. September right. 16th yeah. and then from 5 to 6 o'clock. But we're supposed to have whatever, little pick on types of food or something. Yeah, yeah right. From 6 to 7. So, but we're trying to do a round table yeah. mm -hmm. and having different um, commissions come to do the round table with us. 
and talk about how we can bridge in together. Mm -hmm. And I know that's been Michael Nagy's big thing before about working harder and bringing in communities working together. Correct, Michael? Going further and further? Yes or no? Yeah. And we, and we were because you've stressed that, and there is importance of this. So, I have talked with I forget his name. I don't have my papers with me from Stravas. Pringali. Yes, that's it. He he called me this week. He definitely is coming. I've made all these calls, and there are like city hall people that I'm calling, and they're not in. Uh, or the commission. So well, I need help. If not, I'll go to the mayor's office and see if I can get them to notify them to get the help to come to this meeting. It's becoming very difficult, Patty, with all these names that we have. And we've got groups that you would help. There's no emails or nothing. Yeah, it's just the list that I gave you was um, the list that the Office on Disability puts together, um, listing all the um, coordinators. Right, the coordinators don't work there. Yeah, that's right. A lot of it's a volunteer position that they're appointed similar to this committee. So this is, right, so this is something that we're working on and, and hoping to be pulling together on September 16th and we will certainly let you know the details. Well, we've got our annual IL conference is going on the 16th and 17th of, of September. Oh, okay. And that's, that's an overnight thing. And, when is that? 16th and 17th. Oh, so Where, where's that held? I, no. Janet. But let me where's give you a little upgrade oh, um, about the reasons for this on September. It's because we got a banner, and Ruth did an excellent job yesterday about the banner in my committee, along with our counselors who are on the committee, of our purpose of getting the banner. All the parades that we have. You never ever see any commission coming forth and marching in parades for people with disabilities. And now that we have our banner, we do have a parade coming in October, which is um, Columbus Day, I think, Patty, isn't it? The Pulaski Parade. October uh, 13th is. Yes, isn't that the Pulaski Parade? That's right. Now, Greenfield's got something similar that uh, that they're doing up there. We've, you know, sent a van up and a few people up for their parade right. for the last couple of years. So. And if we could get a bunch of people coming in with Northampton with our banner, uh, representing people with disabilities, I think that would be great. What day of the week is that? That is on a Monday. Holiday. It's a Monday holiday, right? Oh. The, um, October 13th. So that would be the beginning and opening the doors if we could get other communities to come in in full support. And I can hopefully work on getting some people to hold the banners for us. Well, Mike said he'd be available for that. To hold the banner? <laughs> 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 you can put it on his hat. <laughs> And I do have a question. Um, now, one of the one of the, the biggest complaints I get from PCAs is that the checks do not come kind of on a regular basis. It's not all always Wednesday or always Thursday or always Friday. They seem to kind of move back and forth amongst there. And what my folks have done, started doing now, is actually doing the faxing Saturday. And, you know, that seems to regularize it a little bit more. But that's <laughs> that, that, just something that, you know, that I'm curious about is, is the check, is doing the checks, and how you guys have that organized, and. Well, it's, it's monumental. It, it's quite a job. I was wondering, how, do you know how many you guys do? Uh, we process, oh gosh, I think about 16,000. I think about 16,000. Uh, 
PCA checks and personal care assistance program. All right. So they get they receive a check, you know, for their services. And and we're, and they don't get them on time. Well, it's well, on time. It's on time, but it, it varies. You know, sometimes Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. Oh. And just the people that I'm working, you know, people who do PCA work are oftentimes people who, you know, are kind of light in terms of money. Yeah, you know, like living paycheck to paycheck. paycheck yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like and so it yeah. Kind, of, <laughs> kind of is a problem to not know quite when they're going to get paid. Right. Hmm. Well, the, the obligation is to get them out by Friday, so they should right. be delivered no later than Friday or Saturday of the... Right, right. Well, that's, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, is there any way to, you know, like I say, we started faxing on Saturday. Is it helping? What? Is it helping? Yeah, pretty much. We're getting checks on Wednesday now. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So it seems to work. Right? Good. Well, that's really fast turnaround time because what happens is on Monday and Tuesday, our fiscal office just does nothing but process timesheets and, and payroll for two whole days. In fact, they usually work 10-hour days on Monday and Tuesday to make sure that everything gets out. So it could be the component that maybe, you know, uh, maybe it just sat in a box. Yeah. And didn't get mailed out that same day when they fish, finished them at seven o'clock at night or something like that. Right, right. I mean, I don't know, and I'm just just suggesting to you that you know stuff to work on. You know, one thing to work on is kind of trying to get those checks on the on the, the same day. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is the turnover with personal care? The turnover for for the yes. employment attendance. Yes. It's pretty terrific, isn't it? It can be very Oh yeah. Uh, I mean I've had gone through it, periods where you you know you get a new PCA like every week. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's that's awful. That's, that's awful. Well, you that's, just keep on trying to hire people. It, 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 and it's and it's that's the problem they, though. They they're not getting not, paid. They think they're gonna be paid on a certain day and they don't. Well no no, it's less than from because it is, it's a couple of weeks. It, it's set back a couple of weeks. Oh. Yeah, the pay cycle I mean, you're is not gonna, You're not going to get paid until you work two weeks, and then you turn well, that's back understandable. You do, and your pay comes the next week. Yeah. So it's actually you don't get paid until your third week, but you know, oftentimes that's plenty of time for you to, for me to realize that this person is in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I don't need, you know, I, I, I don't envy anybody that has the need for PCAs yeah. because yeah. you get complete and total strangers coming into your house mm -hmm. yeah. often, yeah. Right. you know, and, and then trying to work up relationships with them and, you know, trust. You can't keep anything valuable in your own house when you've got so many strangers yeah. coming in. It's just a... It's really a very difficult program. What did they get for one thing? What's their pay an hour? Twelve eighty? Yeah, I think it's yeah. It's one, thing I it's it's one thing I remember, um, one thing I remember from back in the days, and I, I'm sure that you're still doing that, is that one service that Staff Wars does provide is um, skills training to help people to really feel empowered and to be able to make the best decisions possible about who they hire and how to really assess whether you're getting a reliable person and check references and do as much as you can to yeah, we still do that yeah bad stuff from that before it happens we we, we do still you, do that do you do quarry checks no we do not do quarry checks but the person doing the that's actual actually, but the person yeah. actually doing the hiring see the way that it works as i understand it is that and um, the person actually is doing <coughs> their own hiring so couldn't someone choose to do a quarry check if they wanted to? Oh, sure. They'd have to pay for it. They have to pay for it. Right. Exactly. Ruth, did you want That's to unusual for an agency not to do it. Well, the, the PCAs are not our employees. Right. If they were our employees, so. we'd do it. But right. Okay, so Ruth wanted to say something? Um, I wanted to let you know, you saw like you'd be a good resource for me. I take in old computers. I used to have a PCA, and there was a need for that person that lived in my town house with me. 
had no computer, no money, obviously, but they can ride on the um, internet of the person whose house they're in. So I take in old computers, strip all the copyrighted stuff off, give them free internet, free email, and hand them out. Right now, I'm stuck in this XP Windows 7 transfer. Mm -hmm. Usually I have one or two. And at this point, I don't have anybody that's asked me for one. So if you guys come across the need, some, some PCA who really needs a computer, um, I usually have one or two in my closet that I can... You know, wow, that's awesome. That's oh, awesome. People at the senior center that you know they get new machines from their grandkids. They've been giving me their old machines. Um, awesome. Friends, all sorts of stuff. Oh wow, that's a good. So I want some grandchildren to buy me a computer. <laughs> <laughs> right now, all I have is one XP machine. You can't put XP on the internet anymore, but and I can't afford to upgrade it to Windows 7. But but it would be good for word processing or. Yeah, if you didn't want to put it on the internet. Yeah, if you didn't need that. Yeah. So like seniors come, you're tutoring them, and they come in and bring you their, their old computers and give them to you here? Yeah, I fix them up and donate them out to PCAs who need them. That's fantastic. One of the oh. language PCAs now. Oh, that's, that's, that's a, a really, that's a great. They can't afford computers. They can write on the, the homeowner's internet easily. There's all sorts of free email, free internet, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Open office for word processing, which is free. And everything's copyrighted, I strip off. So I don't have to worry about any of that. And awesome. I maintain them for them, you know, once they get that, set up. That's mm -hmm. an amazing resource. It really is. What's your last name? Yeah. <laughs> and how's it going? Right now I have nobody and I don't know anybody to ask to see if they need them. So when you brought that up, I thought, oh, there's somebody I Okay. I can't believe they actually would bring their computers in here. Yeah. Well, see, you're carrying it for a while until I <laughs> They're probably laptops. Really? Or, no, or last one was a tower. Oh. Last one was a tower. Wow. Yeah. Windows wow. 7 tower, I did give it out. I don't want to give out any names, but yeah, I, I handed that one out. Yeah. So are you looking to give it just to PCAs? Um, Those I, are the ones I targeted because I know that's a requirement. Why did I say my PCA needed one? Afford one. A PCA is required to have a. No. Oh, I thought no, you just helpful. said that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's helpful. I mean, for things like. Because I'm thinking, you know, for doing your billing and. and yeah. 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 You can use an online fax even to fax. Um, oh, I'm not, I'm not I, saying I, it wouldn't be a help, but I'm just yeah. thinking if it's just PCAs that if seniors are giving you this equipment. I know. That, that's what they're doing. I mean, there's lots important. of other people who are who are low income where, yeah, who are need. Yeah. So, there are lots of people who are in low income for various reasons that yeah. could benefit. I just did PCAs because, like I said, that's what came to my mm -hmm. attention. And um, the people that I've talked to, and not just at the senior center, I get them from a lot of places. Sometimes you can't walk in my computer room. But right now I just have one and it's an XP. So it will be fine for word processing, but that's about it. That's really fun. Awesome. Awesome. That's for something. <clears throat> well, Janet, thank you for being here with us today, I think that we have lots of ideas for how to collaborate and connect and, and work together. Good. So, Very good. Appreciate it greatly. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you for so having much. me. Thanks Thank for doing nice what you guys do. Too. Thank you. You too. We've met before. I know it. <laughs> and we're, we were pleased that you um, came to the uh, Health and Safety Fair. It's the first year that we've had you. So it was good. Yeah. Good. So you're on the master list. You'll be invited each and every year. Ooh, we made the master list. <laughs> yeah. And you know I'll be talking to you. We're always <laughs> glad to add names. Yeah. All right. Ruth, do you need the uh, the, the correct spelling of my name? Or do you, oh, yeah. do you pretty much have it? I just want to make sure in your title, just to make sure I have it correct. I have um, just Shaw, S-H-A-W. Correct. Yeah. And do you have a title? I have a title. <laughs> Director of Independent Living Services. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Somebody wanted my email address? I did. Okay. Yeah. It's jshaw at stavros.org. Easy enough. Easy enough. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Too. I'm going to double check on your issue when, because I think it's real, you know and see how that's going, because exactly how the pieces are fit together, my guy, yeah. you know, I, well, I got the general gist, but. Yeah, my sense is they don't fit exactly. 
Yeah, yeah probably not. But okay. You don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we have a few other agenda items to, to get through. Um, the next item on the agenda is the, a review of the COD at the meeting of Social Services, Veterans, Recreation, and Cultural Committee, which occurred um, yesterday evening. And um, I attended, and Mike, and Ruth, and Jim Winston. And I have your interview. Did you guys get a chance to see it on TV? Oh, right now? It was on at 11 o'clock last night. Uh, yeah, that's right. I, I and then it was on again today. Oh, was it? Okay. okay. Yeah, why don't we... Um, can you send it to Tori? Exactly. Can you send it to Tori so I can just send it to everybody? Okay. That's great, Ruth. Thank you for Thank you so that. much. So, um, I personally, I felt like it was a wonderful meeting. I felt like we had the luxury of being able to um, talk for almost an hour about the work that we're doing and I feel like really good connections were made and it was just a really, it felt like a really good affiliative, um, supportive experience and I think others that were there had the same feeling. I mean, it was just a chance for us to um, update the committee on the work we were doing and really be collaborative and it was I was really happy to yeah, be there. I would certainly agree with that. So I had gotten calls from Fred Contrada Friday and Monday morning and then also um, the mayor's office was calling because two people were calling over there because on the agenda that you put out it had about the braille menus and so all of a sudden, everybody's quite interested in that, even though it's been around yeah, for a bit. Yeah, a resurgence of interest. Yeah, that's so good. that's good, because maybe it'll spark um, additional restaurants to want to be involved with it. Yeah, so um, I thought it was it was just very, very positive, and you know, we look forward to doing that again in the future. Thank you. Great meeting. Um, Pioneer Valley. Planning Commission PBTA meeting Wednesday, June 18th, 3.30 at the Northampton Senior Center. And I guess that says it all. There's going to be a meeting. Yep. So they're looking for input about um, how the program with PBTA is going. Oh, it's on the agenda, Miriam. They're looking for input about what? How the automated you know, calls how everything, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh. Um, I have input, but unfortunately, um, I'm not able to be there because of work. It's five. It's five thirty to. I, I'm sorry, three thirty to five thirty. Right. Yeah, I can be there. Well, I think yeah. there's one in Amherst too, but I don't. I don't know what the date is on that. I sent everybody the flyer that they sent. Yeah. So I think Amherst was listed on there. I believe it was Amherst. I'm really good at. Um, giving them input whenever I want. So um, well, I'm sure they take written well they, <laughs> they take phone calls and, and written letters comments, or whatever right. you want to send them. Yeah, I would emails. encourage people who um, have feelings about it but aren't able to be there um, to communicate those feelings in writing or in phone call or in mm -hmm. some way because that will hopefully impact um, how it goes. So that's that. Um, and then um, HP and Florence Center. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, so, Councilor Labarge and myself have been up in Florence uh, several times with DPW uh, looking at the handicap parking space, which actually there's two. One which was already approved years back, so we're just waiting for the sign. The other one is in front of birds. It has gone from City Council to City, to ordinance, to transportation, and it will go back to City it's Council. Back to ordinance. With full recommendations That's from right. the City Council. The first reading is this Thursday. So if anybody is available for open public session to come and speak and to encourage 
the city councilors to vote for the handicapped parking being replaced. Well, Tor yeah, yeah, Tori's coming, I'm coming, so whoever can come anyone speak else, anyone on else behalf of it. Anyone else is welcome to come as well. Um, so um, I was just going to come and ask them to support it and to say that it would benefit, that, you know, that there are several people who have asked for this, elderly and disabled people who have asked for this, and that it would be a great benefit. I was just going to make a brief statement, that's make a, an appearance so they know. That's that. good. That's what all you need to do, Tori. And um, I will see you there. I'll put your name down on the uh, list okay. so that they'll call your name. Okay, and then, great. yeah, and then certainly just leave. Uh, you're welcome, I'm sure, to stay at the whole what meeting. What say is that you come in for full support, full support for the ordinance um, um, from the Commission on Disabilities and the City Council of Mary Ann That's how the ordinance is placed. Okay, wait. So I'm supposed to say that language? I'm supposed to say. Well, you probably can't hear me. There's um, an ordinance in place on the fourth tonight, which okay. is Thursday night. Sorry, I'm writing this down. Ordinance place. Do you have the ordinance in front of you? Um, so I don't think I have that folder. And it's sponsored by City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge and the Commission on Disabilities. Okay. So. So that's the language to use to say um, there is an ordinance that's an ordinance place which is coming forth tonight, sponsored by City Councilor Marianne Labarge and the Commission on Disabilities to um, to have um, to place a handicap to place okay um, a, a handicap parking space handicap parking. Space in, on, on Maple, Street, Maple Street, Florence Street in Florence, um, in front of Birds, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We don't have to go into details. No, just so you're the yeah. others. I don't think think of, I don't think I'll be there since 1999. Right. right, that one's yeah. a given already, so yeah. so we don't even have We're to just mention a, that no, one. No. So um, that's a dead. <laughs> just waiting for the sign. Exactly. So uh, an ordinance has been placed, which is coming forth tonight, sponsored by City Councilor Marianne Labarge and the Committee on, on the Commission. I'm on sorry, I wrote C O M. I know. Commission, Commission on Disabilities. Commission on Disabilities to place a handicapped parking space on Maple Street in front of of Birds, um, and this would greatly benefit our our community, particularly the elderly and disabled. And I'm asking for the full support of City Council. Right? Yep. Yeah, for their first vote. Um, Oh, I'm asking for, okay, right. to, asking for, okay, so I'm asking for full support um, of their first voting tonight. Of, on their first voting or of? Of the first vote. First, first, uh, That's in place in front of them tonight. Of the first, first vote being placed in front of them tonight. Okay, I'm going to write this all up nicely between now and then. Yes, that's fine. Because I'm just writing messy notes right now, but I'll make it so that I understand it. Okay. <laughs> and um, anyone else who wants to come would be more than welcome. The more the merrier. I will try, but I'm picking up my mom Thursday, so she's staying until the end of the following week. And she's not really very mobile or anything, and she can't be left alone, so I don't know if I can make it. That's right. Can do what you can do. That's right. Yeah, that's totally whatever you can do is great. And I'm, I'm going to come do it, and anyone else who wants to come. So we're talking approximately six to no, no, no. seven. 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 Right. I would I say. I don't want to be the tour. No, I would say <laughs> the best time to get in there is around quarter seven. Yeah. So that you can sign your name on the sign in sheet. That way you don't have to stay through the whole thing. What'd you say, Michael? They always sign me first. That's okay. Yeah, no, no, it's fine with me. I'll go for I'll go before you. If yeah, but you know, that's yeah, okay. Patty, yeah. yeah, yeah. sign over. Yeah, I'll, I'll sign me when I get there. I'll sign me right in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so an ordinance has been placed, which is coming forth tonight, sponsored by City Councilor Mary Ann Lamarge and the Commission on Disabilities. Okay, that's how I say it, right? Okay. 
Um, all right. Thank you. Um, so. Other business. Other, oh, the last agenda was the benches. Benches, yeah. Is that your last item? I guess. For other business. Did you guys hand it out yesterday? So. Oh, and I forgot to pass good. these around. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. You've got it already. I've got it already? Okay. I'm sorry. I could use That's okay. I know you just trying to. That was the original. That's why I'm handing out. Okay, so who, who wanted to speak um, about the benches in Florence? Ruth? Patty, what's that? Because I talked about yesterday. About the benches? Yes. Yeah, so um, the commission has talked about people having places to sit in Florence and there's a lack of uh, benches up there. So um, Councilor LaBarge and Councilor Klein from Ward 7, because Florence is uh, covered by both of them, um, as well as uh, David Murphy was invited um, in the DPW and it was looking at where benches could be uh, placed in Florence. So it was looking at near on the sidewalk near Miss Florence Diner, or Miss Flo's, and then over on the side of Birds going west. So it's really, I think that's Meadow Street right there. Um, and by the Pizza Place. Oh, oh in there as well? Okay, and I, yes, that's, that's correct. Thank you for reminding me about that. And then one near, um, on the corner where Pizza Factory is, there's a space right there um, on the sidewalk that uh, another bench could get placed. So people would be able to go around Florence and have a place to sit in between them, um, you know, catching their breath or needing to relax for a few minutes before moving, moving along. And of course, to sit and socialize and all the other things you can do when you have a place to sit. So and those were the three. Also, I introduced Patty and Alyssa Klein to um, the owner of the Florence Diner, and um, she gave Clarence, we asked her opinion of how she felt about a bench being placed there. She really liked the idea. The only thing was there was a trash barrel there and she had complaints about that, but I've taken care of that with the Board of Public Works. Um, Jim Larillo, who's the assistant engineer at the Board of Public Works, we went on a second site visit, which was Patty and I, Jim Larillo and Richard Pasoletti. Alyssa Klein could not make it for the second site visit. Um, anyways, we showed them the three spots and Jim Larillo is on the board of the Florence Civic Association and he was going to bring up to let them know of the sites that we have looked at and where our priority was, our first choice, second choice, our third choice. I gave Jim Larillo a call today in reference of an update, so hopefully he'll get back to me on that. But this all coincides with the city of Northampton and Florence. We have a resolution that's put in place, and we're looking at hopefully having a hearing coming down the line on vibrant sidewalks and we would like to have Florence be part of that vibrant sidewalk and I think this is the right direction to go. Um, and so what I'm going to say now is because these three benches are going to have to be uh, purchased, two benches, um, it, okay let's just make sure, um, so it's in front of Miss Flo's and then... Um, and they're going to make a decision for us, Patty. Which one? Um, which two sites? Okay, so the DPW, of the three that we've talked about, the DPW is going to determine the two sites. But with those benches needing to be purchased, that was going to be paid through the Commission on Disability. So I think to um, sort of be ahead of this, if uh, the Commission wanted to vote for um, funding for these benches, uh, and we aren't really sure exactly how much they are, because of, um, and if they're going to be have a, an engraved plaque on them. Mm -hmm. um, so nice. a bench could in fact cost $1,500 or so. So if the commission wanted to um, uh, take a vote as to approving so much 
funds for um, two benches, then that would be in place and ready when and if the benches uh, can be placed um, where we've discussed. So right, I also brought that to their attention yesterday, gave them pictures. Michael, you have one of the pictures on it? Oh, yes. So each one of the members that were there got one. And it also will be in our minutes in place, the picture will be, and coming to full city council for approval of our minutes on social services and veterans affairs. I, my big concern is the plaques. And I really would like to have the commission make a decision on how they would like the wording done on the plaque. That's being part of everybody working together, and I think the language is important. Um, so, um, is is it with the um, inscription on the plaque something that everybody could think about and send maybe their ideas to Tori, and then in? I think it's something very subtle that you can look at, Patty, instead mm -hmm. of emailing and emailing, yeah. of making a decision and saying. I think Ruth brought up something really nice when her and I were talking. Yeah, well, I just said how about donated by the Northampton Commission on Disability. Yeah. Simple enough. That's that sounds perfect. perfect. That uh, sounds provided by perfect to me. This bench provided by the Northampton Committee, right, the Disability North Commission. The Northampton Commission on Disability. Right, in the date. I like provided by. I do too. Yeah. I think that is fine with me. I like that language. <laughs> okay, so this, this bench provided by the Northampton Commission, Commission on, disability, on disability and then the date. The date. Yep. And right. so the date would be probably when we right it. when we have approval because what happens is That'd be great the Commission needs to approve the funding and then I have to go to City Council to ask for the money to be um, approved and then um, the money can be released for purchase and then I will talk on the floor about where this money is going and how it's being purchased and where we are placing it Right, Patty? Yeah. So are you suggesting, Patty, that we vote now yes. to a lot of the funds? Yes, I, yes. I think that would keep this uh, momentum moving forward. Can someone make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that? that we um, allow up to, well, there were 1,020 roughly, plus the plaques, I'd say $3,000, not to exceed 3000 Wait a minute. I disagree with that. Because she just said the benches could be 1500 apiece. And we're not talking about the plaques. Oh, he's yeah. going a little higher. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, so well, I know, but I think we need to have some leverage here of play money just in case. Yeah, so 30, I've done it before, and we need to have her be able to have an amount to play with. If we don't use it, it goes back into our account. How about 3500 yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Is so. 500 enough for the two plaques? Oh, it should be. I, I hope so. It, you know, if, if it works, then it's... So if it's not, we can always take another well, vote to exactly add. Exactly, to yeah, add on. So, Ruth, do you want to start that motion again? Sure. Uh, I move that we spend up to $3,500 on two park benches with plaques on them, um, with the uh, comments on the plaques that we've previously... And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That's great. Um, that's very exciting. Um, also, too, we're trying to work something out um, with our financial director. Like, Patty had to come in for $100. And I'm going to talk with Susan Wright because I have to go to City Hall tomorrow anyways because of our council packets and stuff. And they're looking at changing that policy so she doesn't have to keep coming back for $100. Right. Yeah, that there may be a decision mm -hmm. on what the commission thinks it may be spending, and then there there would be let let's say you voted on all these things you wanted to do, and it's up to um, four thousand dollars. That then there's that four thousand dollars that can already be done used because you've already approved that this is a project you're going to work on. Right. So it's not going because that like that banner was forty six dollars. Um, so yeah, it, and you know Susan had um, made a suggestion with. Councilor Barge following up on it, then I think it'll be an easier process. And yes. That was just have to come in for it. That sounds really good. Yes. Okay. Um, 
Is there any other business? I have a story. <coughs> uh, first of all, we have some new mail we received. Massachusetts Department of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing uh, sent us an updated count, uh, catalog for our library. Great. Um, and I also have some other things to put in at the agenda from uh, social services the other night, a few other things. Um, at the meeting last night, I was asked to talk to Joanne at the Senior Center this morning about the website for COD. Doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. Wait Joanne minute. went out. You just said at the meeting last night? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't suggest that. No, we, amongst our oh. four of us, talked about it. Okay. Um, we want to put that list of restaurants that have the menus up on the city website. Yeah, I already talked to Joanne about that. I talked to her this morning, and I have a lot of stuff from the previous web. She didn't get much from anybody when she asked for what we used. I, I yes, I had sent an email to everybody on the commission that mm -hmm. if the if the website is lacking information, it's because I have not gotten anything I have from anybody. A bunch of stuff that we used to have. Um, stuff, a lot of stuff we used to have we don't need anymore, like the minutes, the agendas, those are on the city's part. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, sure. But our mission statement, we had put together a list of links uh, from a page that Stavros had of things that can help people with different disabilities. Um, the list of restaurants. I have a whole pile of stuff that I put together for Joanne. And she said I should put it all together and give it to you, you have to give it to her. So oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, which is the right policy because she's the director and she works under the director. And I, I talked with Joanne when I saw her today, please. When I saw her today, she told me you did approach her mm -hmm. and that she was going to Patty, yeah. okay, because that's her boss, and she's doing the right steps. I so our, I know. I know. Great. Yeah. So Thank our you. website is only as good as the information we get to put on it. So I, I have. Um, I, mean, I think we're the only one Ruth sending information. I'm not sure, but I have it all to give her. Um, she asked me if I could put it on a disc, so I'm going to type up before I ever get into you. Um, not to be, not to be a downer, but I have information from my office on um, things that are not cheerful, but that people with disabilities should probably know, like information about caregiver abuse and information about um, the disability services program at St. Passage, which is basically. That um, <laughs> maybe would be beneficial to have, and sure. I will. I, I have to talk to people at work and see whether that's okay. Okay. Just, like, yeah, that would be great. From Stavros before I grab their list of you links. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll talk to. I will talk to my supervisor um, in the near future and see about that. And I have one more thing. Um, we briefly yesterday mentioned maybe this would be possible, so I talked to Patty today. We're talking about the banner. The banner's going to sit in the closet unless we use it. Maybe we can display it in the senior center so we'll have a little more visibility. Mm -hmm. um, Patty said it yeah. depended on whether there was space that they could put it. But I would I mean, love that. It yeah. would help get us out there some more so people could see us more and know we exist. I think that's an awesome idea. Isn't there a space up there, Patty? Yeah, I, I, yeah, we don't have like a lot of long wall space because we have so many windows everywhere. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll figure out a, a place that it could go. Do you um, have the banner? Yeah, I have the banner. Is it in your office? Mm -hmm. I see that, please. Yeah. When the meeting's over, do you want me to get it now? I haven't seen it. Has anybody yeah. seen it? Yeah, I brought it to the meeting. And, and safety fear, right? I was busy. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. see it. But I brought it to our um, meeting. I actually have to show that after the meeting for people who want to. Oh, yeah. I'll see it later. Okay. All right. I'll send you any, Anyone else have any other business or are we ready to make a motion to adjourn? Well, I was just going to say that um, Hannah Coyle sent me a, a letter um, that she wanted an item under old business about the election of the vice chair at our April 20. Uh, 14 meeting um, and she was going to address that but she's not here so um, I just wanted to mention that she was going to bring that up okay so we will um, have that on our next meeting right and I, mm -hmm. I think that's true I think there should be a break-in of what the duties are of the chair and the vice chair well, it's right in our bylaws and everybody has a copy of the bylaws is that what she is that what she wanted to I, I don't know specifically okay. what, Tori, she just sent the letter and I emailed saying we put it under other because the agenda already was established. Okay. Um, so. so we also, Patty, I think you asked on an email 
when Ruth's not here, somebody taking over to do minutes? And, and the commission um, stated that it should be the, the vice, vice chair. chair. So. That's what it said in the minutes. Okay, so as you're closing the meeting, I'm going to go get the banner so everybody can see it again. All right. Mm -hmm. Also, to um, Patty, on the minutes, I gave you an example of how they should be made. Have I think Ruth has seen them, right? Yeah, Ruth has seen them. So, and they, yeah. they need to be shortened. Right. Well, I, I hope that you are uh, feeling confident with the minutes I did that were a page and a half. Yep. So that's what these are to the page. That yeah. it's yeah. not, um, you know, not a conversation. It's not a conversation. It's yep. um, just a, a brief look at what we uh, vote, especially the votes are important. Exactly. I, I thought they were good. Yep. All right. This is a page and a half as well. I'll make I'll a right motion down. that we adjourn. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you guys in July. Or actually, I'll be.